no need for this man to die. He had crash landed successfully. He suffered no injuries, no broken bones. Even without equipment, he could have survived. All he needed was matches. A box of matches and knowledge. Knowledge of how to use what he had. I'm going to supply you with what knowledge I can. And though you can get by with very little else, you should always be supplied with certain equipment. An emergency kit or rucksack is vital. If none is available, or you don't like what is given you, pull one yourself. Don't let anyone razz you out of it. Take whatever else you like, but, but these things are essentials. A pair of gloves. A complete flying suit. Automatic pistol, 45 caliber, and two spare clips. Boots, socks, and extra socks. Rations, matches, and a watertight floatable matchbox. A good grade pocket knife, preferably a scout knife. A small axe. And of course your parachute. That's essential. Take these things and you can sustain yourself if you're forced down. Now let's get to the briefing. Though you've never flown it, it's a routine flight. You ought to fly pea shooters from here to Ladd Field. Captain McIntyre will be flight leader and pilot a B-17. It'll act as navigation ship and be your radio contact. It will check you every 20 minutes. Be sure you keep tuned. You'll be flying over wild, desolate country, heavily wooded areas and rivers and lakes, mountains of snow and ice. ago I was sunning myself at Miami Beach. Now look at me, flying over snow country. Joe, I mean snow. Hardy the McIntyre. Hardy the McIntyre. Hire the McIntyre. Hire the McIntyre. Come in, please. Please come in, Mac. Hire the briefing officer. Come in, please. Brother, please come in and talk like you never talked before. this man to die. Don't bail out. Don't bail out. 
Do not bail out. Do not bail out unless there's uncontrollable fire or structural failure. Always stay with the airplane. It affords protection on the ground and greatly increases your chances of being seen by searchers. Select your landing spot intelligently. A smooth, snow-covered swamp, river bar, lake, near road or railroad if possible, so rescue and salvage are easier. Slopes or ridges are generally warmer than valleys, and the difference in temperature may mean the difference between life and death. Difference between life and death. Altitude not less than 5,000 is desirable. Make full use of radio while still in air. Transmit blind. Conditions, position, topography, landmarks. Make a slow landing. Prop should be feathered or stopped by gently stalling airplane. Such a landing, capably executed, is only slightly rougher than normal. Don't get out of plane unless absolutely necessary. I think it might be necessary. Get that. Of course. He said. Always make a belly landing. With your gear retracted, danger of turning over is very slight. Now he tells me. Some place I can dig in and try to get word back. tremendous job. You'll not be able to make more than a mile an hour. Walking is a last resort. Stay with your plane, except when positive of your position. Positive that shelter is within easy reach. Never attempt to travel without adequate equipment. In ordinary flying gear, you cannot last more than two days. McIntyre to Hardy. McIntyre to Hardy. Come in, Hardy. Formation continue on to Lad Field. I'll search back along flight line for Hardy. Just 
time. Sure sucks in fast around here. I'll never find you in this stuff. The Air Corps doesn't let men stay lost. Your outfit, your pals know you're missing, and they'll search until you're found. Your main business is to help them right where you are. Where am I? A certain well-known crick. Avoid panic. Conserve your energy. Be calm. Take stock of the situation. See what can be used. A hearty, complete camping outfit. One pocket knife, one match pack, one jerk. Your chute will provide you with ample material for many uses. Don't hesitate to use it, or any parts of the airplane. Equipment is much easier to replace than pilots. There's plenty to occupy your attention. Drain oil for future use before it congeals. Build a fire as soon as possible and make camp. Collect firewood, a lot of it, and keep collecting. Okay, okay, one thing at a time. But uh, keep reminding me. It's hard to tell dead from dormant wood in extreme cold. But look for dead wood. It burns more easily. For tinder, use birch bark, spruce bough tips, rotten dry wood, pussy willow fuzz. Alder bushes will burn even though green. Twist and break them. Now's the time to follow in your own footsteps, Lieutenant. It's gonna be a long fight. Round two coming up. The wood sure got all the weight in this bout. Don't expend energy aimlessly. Plan your actions. Get the most done for every effort. Great old second, that briefing officer. Plan actions. Plan actions. What can I use as a sled to haul wood? I don't know how to do it. Above all things, 
avoid wet feet wet socks and snow in your flying boots quickly destroy their insulating ability tie your trousers on the outside to prevent snow from packing in I better start remembering these things before they happen no wonder my dogs are cold and wet Remove wet shoes and socks at once. You walk around in my bare feet, I suppose. Your parachute will provide you with ample material for many uses. The importance of keeping the feet dry or of tending them at once if wet cannot be overemphasized. Don't hesitate to use any equipment. If you haven't got extra socks, make foot wrappings from your parachute. A wet foot may freeze in 20 minutes and produce irreparable damage. We spread it on the wing. We cut it better. Lieutenant, sometimes your cleverness amazes me. Cut material into strips about 10 inches wide and six feet long. Slit one end to insert the foot. Put the strips next to your body to warm the silk. Dry the feet thoroughly. Make sure there's no snow on the material and wrap the strips, not tightly, around your foot and ankle. Leave an overlap and fold it back loosely over the toes. Continue wrapping so that there are at least three layers of cloth over each part of the foot. The next strip is started the same way but is wound around the leg as a legging. Alternate this way, wrapping each leg until an inch thickness or more has been laid, depending on the weather. And secure the leggings with parachute cord. How the hell will I get my boots on? Don't wear your boots over these wrappings. They're too tight. And when wet, they're not easily dried. Cut canvas from an engine cover or the chute pack itself.
fashion it into an overshoe. you'll find you have a kind of muckluck, Eskimo footgear, that will keep your feet warm and dry. Remember, your feet must be protected at all costs. And it's not as easy to tell when your feet approach the freezing point as other parts of the body. Hands, nose, cheeks, chin, and forehead are also easily subject to frostbite. You won't feel it, or it doesn't hurt, but gray and white patches appear on the skin Watch your face for this evidence of it. What's my face? It won't work, friend. I forgot to bring my other head. Wrinkle your face from time to time to discover any stiffness. If the flight surgeon who passed me could only see me now. Let's take a look at this in the mirror. Not me, bub. My schnoz looks like a vanilla popsicle. Never rub frostbite. Keep the part out of the wind and warm it gradually. Thaw just by placing a hand over the frozen areas until circulation is restored. Warm your hands inside your clothes, under the armpits or between the legs. Now where were we? Oh yeah, getting the most done with the least effort. Soak pieces of canvas in the oil for future use in lighting fires or making smoke signals. on back for that wood. Boy, I never thought I'd wind up as a one-man dog team. Collect firewood, a lot of it, and keep collecting you'll need larger pieces for a long-lasting fire. In extreme cold, wood is very brittle. Good-sized birch or spruce branches can be broken, or even a small tree felled easily. And me with it. hotter standing over a fire than it is getting it started. Always unbutton or remove clothing layer by layer before you start to perspire. You must keep clothes dry and free from perspiration. Damp clothes, especially wool, lose their insulating quality and cause freezing. Moisture conducts heat away from the body. 
Men literally go out from conduction. All right, but all I gotta say is this is the hell of a spot for a strip tease. In working or traveling at 40 below, men can strip down to their shirt sleeves and be safer than when fully clothed. Do, do, do. Yes, and as warm. Yeah, I guess I'm old-fashioned, but it seems to me I ought to wear a lot of clothes when I'm up to my crotch in snow. Tight clothing is dangerous. It impairs the circulation. Always permit free passage of air. Leave the clothing loose around the body, tight at the neck, and snug at the wrist. That traps the warm air, and the cold air being heavier won't rise. Like me tomorrow morning. Freezing to death often results from becoming overheated. All right, all right. What good is all this remembering? What am I knocking myself silly for? They'll probably never find me. Probably haven't even any idea where I am. If our radio checks are okay, then he should be down right about here. Frank, how's the weather? A little on the stinky side, Mac. Well, we want to get up and look for Hardy first thing in the morning. There are heavy clouds and moderate icing in the pass, and low ceilings over most of the route. Might lift some overnight, though. Well, order the best, because we're going to start searching tomorrow in anything better than zero, zero. Sometimes a man's strongest link to life. Garden. You could say that again. Briefer boy, you really call it. This tinder burns like a top sergeant. Shelter place that will not be covered with drifting snow. Clear it. 